We're coming to you today from the Glory Bound Baptist Church in Stephenville, Texas. And uh, you may not be near here, but if you are, if you're in town, we'd like to invite you to come and be with us every Sunday morning, 1030. We have an abbreviated Sunday school. That's the first half. We have refreshments and some donuts and coffee and things. That's our halftime. And then we do the second half, which is part of what we're doing right here. But we're a Bible teaching church. And we love the Lord, and we want to invite you to come and be with us here if you're in the area. If you're not, we understand, and we hope that this recording is a blessing to you. And today we're going to continue on in the book of Genesis. Remember we started with Adam and Eve, we went on to Cain and Abel, then we went to Noah, and uh, talked about him, the man of the hour, and then we started with Abraham, the great man of faith. We talked last Sunday about Isaac. Isaac was the, was the common man who lived an uncommon life. And you know, I still wonder about Isaac. What, what, here you have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know about Abraham and Jacob, but Isaac, he's just a common man. And we talked about that last week. Today, we're going to transition into Jacob and why Jacob was important. And uh, as, we, as we think about Jacob and we think about his family, his dad was Isaac. And uh, we think about uh, their family and all the things. You know, families are an interesting study. And uh, I, I saw this preacher one time, and he said he likes to sit in airports and just watch people at the airport. Because you see the families traveling, and you see the thing. Sometimes the kids are controlling the parents. You ever seen that? As <laughs> you get out of the public. I guess you could do the same thing in a mall. But it's interesting to think of families. And when you look at Genesis and you look now at Jacob and, and Esau and Isaac and their family, we see that there's all sorts of unusual things going on. And, and the thing that are, is unusual about family, not really unusual, but factual, is that every child that's born in a family is different. You ever thought about that? Every child, I mean, you can have the same parents, you live in the same home, you eat the same food, you go to the same school, and yet every kid is different. And we see that here with Esau, the firstborn, and Jacob. And today we're going to talk about Jacob, who was a, a, an unusual child, a child who was gifted, talented, he was famous, as the Bible talks about him, and refers to him, but he's a rebel. And uh, I think sometimes rebels are an interesting study when we think about it in books or in culture or in real life or in movies. In fact, in the 1950s, there was a movie called Rebel Without a Cause with James Dean. I never saw the movie, but I knew about it. And it was a popular movie. And it was interesting as they studied a rebel. And today we're going to talk about a rebel, a rebel whom God changed. And we're going to read our text today in Genesis chapter 31 and verse 11. If you have your Bibles, it's Genesis chapter 31 and verse 11. And the Bible says, And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. The Lord spoke to Jacob one evening, late, and said, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. Today we're going to talk about Jacob. And I have to tell you, as we talk about him, when you study Jacob, if you'll, if you'll analyze the chapters in the book of Genesis, almost half of the book of Genesis is about Jacob. Fifty chapters in Genesis. And almost half of them deal with Jacob and his family and the things that happened to him and with him. And so today we want to first of all think about who was Jacob. Remember last week we talked about the term that's used 32 times in the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All through the scriptures we see it said over and over and over again. Even today in Sunday school, in Acts chapter 3, we saw it again when Peter said to the Jews that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we've talked about Abraham, we've talked about Isaac. Today we're going to talk about Jacob. But who was Jacob? <clears throat> well, his father was Isaac, of course, we know that. And he, when, he was, when they were born, they were fraternal twins, okay? And Esau was his older brother by just a few seconds, maybe a few minutes. Esau was born first, and then Jacob was born. And when God spoke to Rebekah before they were born, God said to Rebekah that the, that the elder was going to serve the younger. The elder was going to serve. Now, isn't that unusual when you think about it? Usually the oldest child 
is the main child in the family. But God told Rebecca, the mother, that the elder was going to serve the younger. That's a little bit strange. But how did that come to be? Well, the Bible says that Esau was born first, and that by being born first in their culture, he had a birthright. Now, today, usually in homes, we know all about this. Usually the mom and the dad, they write their will up, and they usually normally give the kids equal shares of the inheritance. But in the times of the Bible, what happened was is that, the, is that the father gave the birthright or the inheritance of all he had to his oldest child. Gave it to his oldest child. And by tradition and by how they did their family business in those days, it was customary to give the firstborn the inheritance. And I mean that's everything. And then he could do with it as he pleased. Well, here's Esau born, and then as we study the scriptures in, in uh, Genesis chapter 25, we see something unusual. Let's go there. Let's read it. Genesis chapter 25 and in verse number 27. Genesis chapter 25, and I'll turn there with you. Genesis chapter 25 and in verse number 27. And the Bible says, and the boys grew, verse 27, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Let's think about that just a little bit. All right? Esau, his name means Rudy, or in other words, red-faced. Maybe he had red hair, but he, he would, and you know what? When I think about men that have red faces, I usually think of men that are out in the sun all the time. And the thing about Esau was, we see here, is that he was a hunter. And in those days, they couldn't go to the grocery store and buy some frozen food or, or buy some meat that's been wrapped and bring it home and put it in the freezer. No, they had to hunt it. They had to kill it in order to have meat. And Esau was a hunter. Hunting was a big deal in those days. Amen? And so Esau was a hunter. And he was, he was rudy or red-faced. And Jacob, his name means surplanter, sneak, conniver, a cheater. And maybe you could throw in lowdown, too, if you wanted to. He's got all kinds of adjectives that we could use there to describe Jacob. Okay? So anyway, they have their names. Notice verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of the venison. And let me tell you something. Venison is out of this world. I've never had the opportunity to eat much of it, but I can tell you from experience, the little bit that I've had, it's great. And the dad just loved the venison that Esau would bring in. And the Bible says in verse 28, that the dad, Isaac, loved Esau because he ate of the venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Now let's think about Jacob. The Bible says there in verse number 27, the last part, that he was a plain man and lived or dwelt in tents. What that is delicately trying to say is that he liked to work in the house, okay? He liked to be by his mother and he liked to make his mother happy and he liked to cook in the kitchen and he liked to do this and do that and he was comfortable inside the house. We might say today that he was a mama's boy, okay? But he had a real close relationship with his mother and Esau had a close relationship with his father. But as the story goes and what I've told you now is that he's going to sell his birthright. Esau's going to sell his birthright. Esau was out hunting one day, I'm giving you the Reader's Digest version, and he came back and he didn't find anything. And that's the thing about hunting. When you go out hunting, you don't always get what you're looking for. Amen? So he came back and he was starving. And there was Jacob in the kitchen making food. And he thought, he thought aha, I'm going to pull a fast one on my older brother. He said, are you hungry? He says, oh yeah. He'd been cooking the stew in the kitchen there. And it was smelling good. And it was just filling the tent with all sorts of wonderful flavors and aromas. And, and, uh, and, he's, and, and Esau's dying of hunger. He says, I've got to eat. And you know what Jacob said, the conniver? He said, tell you what, I'll feed you all you want, this beautiful, delicious stew, if you'll sell me your birthright. And he saw, listen, he's getting hungry by the minute. Oh, okay, just give me some food. I'm hungry. And so the Bible says that Jacob gave him this porridge, this stew that he had, this wonderful concoction that he had made. And there was Esau. And Esau gave to his brother something that represented his birthright okay you got to understand now, i don't the bible doesn't say what it was it may have been a verbal thing it may have been some sort of an object that esau gave to his brother i don't know but he sold him his birthright for a mess of pottage for a bunch of stew okay 
And you got to remember that. Then later on, when this dad was dying, okay, we see much later that uh, what, what's going to happen here. But this is basically who Jacob was. He was the second son of Isaac and Rebekah, and he connived to get the birthright from his brother Esau. All right, that's the, that's the basic. Now, secondly, what did he do? And the question is, what didn't he do? You know, this sneaky person. He was spoiled. He was a mama's boy. He looked for ways to take his brother to get his way. He looked for ways to trick his brother. And I'm sure there's other things that he did as well. And then later, in Genesis 27, we read in the scriptures that, we're not going to go there, but I'm just going to, for time's sake. But as Isaac was getting up in years, Isaac was going, felt like he was going to die. He was getting dim. They didn't have glasses like we have today. Thank the Lord for glasses. Amen. And so Isaac was, he couldn't hardly see. He was not feeling well, but he was wanting some venison like he was accustomed to getting. And so one day as he was up in years and he said, you know what? He says, I want you to go Esau and get some venison and make me happy so that I can bless you. So that I can bless you. In other words, bless you with your inheritance, with your birthright. So the Bible says in Genesis 27 that Esau went out to hunt. He was gone all day. And Rebekah, okay, Rebekah, she heard what was going on. I'm sorry. She said, she said that she heard. Let me turn there. And Rebekah heard this conversation. And she says, Psst, Jacob, Esau's going out. We can make a trick so that we can trick your father to help you. We want to help him. We want to help him. She wanted to help him. So Esau was gone, and they made this plan between Rebekah and her son that they were going to trick dad because dad couldn't see. So she made up a dish that was like the venison. It wasn't. She seasoned it like the venison. And, she, and the story goes, as the story goes, they came to bring it, and Jacob put a, because Esau was hairy as well, Jacob was real smooth, he put like this fur over his arm and went to his dad and brought the food and said, I'm Esau. And the dad says, how, how could you be Esau? You haven't been gone long enough. You haven't been gone long enough to get the, the deer. Well, I'm Esau, and I've cooked this food for you, and I want you to bless me now. So he gives the food to, to Isaac, and he feels that fur that's on Jacob's arm that was put there. He's, he's conniving, he's sneaking. And so what happened was, he felt that, and Isaac believed, it, although a little bit with doubt, he believed that that was Esau. And so as you read in chapter 27, you see how that Isaac blessed Jacob with the birthright, believing that it was Esau and not Jacob. And here Jacob gets it, and as soon as they were done, Esau comes back from the hunt, and he says, Hi, Father. He says, Who's that? He says, I'm Esau. I just got back from the hunt. I'll have your food ready. He said, Who? Who are you? And, and Isaac was just overwhelmed. He couldn't believe, and he realized that Jacob had tricked him, and that Isaac had stolen that birthright from his father. Isaac, I'm sorry, Jacob had the birthright that rightfully belonged to his brother. So you know what? It's pretty sad what happened here. And uh, how should we look at Jacob today? There's other things we could talk about. We don't have the time. How, what are the, how, we could see this theologically. Um, now, now stay with me here. Okay. When I, when I say theologically, we're looking at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. We're looking as God called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees, how that God calls us to be saved. We look at Isaac, the son that was born into privilege. He didn't have to work for anything he was given him. That's a picture of us when we get saved. We don't have to, we're, we have an inheritance through the, through, by Jesus Christ. We're, we're co-heirs with him. And then we look at Jacob and we see him as a, as a believer. This is, a, this is called typology. We're using these different people to help us understand what salvation is. And we look at Jacob and we see Jacob, oh yeah, he's part of the family. He was born in the family, but wait, he's got sinful practices in his life. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He likes to do things wrong. He likes to live like the world. And God is dealing with him, okay? And we see that in ourselves. So 
there's, these are types or pictures of us as believers in Isaac, I'm sorry, in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We can look at that theologically. And then we can also see it as just a story. We can just see it as a story, you know, and, uh, and, and read about it and say, oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's a wonderful story. That's a wonderful story. That's a wonderful story. And that's all good. But I think that the best thing we, we can do with Jacob as we study about him and think about him is that we need to see ourselves in Jacob. We need to see ourselves in Jacob. Now, the thing about Jacob is, is that he, was a, he wasn't living in God's will. And there's a lot of Christians who say they're saved. And you know what? If somebody comes to me and says, I'm a believer, I trust the Lord, I'm going to believe that person. I'm going to accept their testimony straight up. Now, they may not be saved, but I'm going to accept their testimony that they are saved, if they are. But that how many Christians are there that are in this world and are not living for the Lord? And they may be saved, the Bible says, yet so as by fire, but they're not living for God. That's kind of like Jacob. That's kind of how he was. And so when we see Jacob and think about his uh, life of rebellion, his life of, of sneakiness, his life of, of, of taking what wasn't rightfully his, we see a lot of that in ourselves. And we need to see ourselves through Jacob. Now, what, what am I trying to say here? It's kind of like when you look in a mirror. We, all, we have mirrors in this room. We have one over there. Uh, we have one over there. We've got them in the bathrooms. Do you know that women even carry mirrors in their purses? Can you believe that? Even in our cars, up in the uh, sun visor, you can pull your visor down and there's a mirror there. Some of these visors even have lights. So you can look at yourself while you're going down the road. How many of you ever done that before? Pull that mirror down, try to like, look at yourself, okay? Well, the Bible says that God's Word is a mirror, okay? And that we're looking through a mirror. And uh, over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, the Apostle Paul writes that we don't see things clearly today, but someday we will. We will see everything as it is when we get to heaven. Well, and today we just, things are cloudy. You know, what church is right, what Bible is right, what music is right. Where should we go to? There's so many churches. What do we do? We don't see it clearly, okay? But what God wants us to do is to look at ourselves through the mirror of His Word, through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and through circumstances so that we can see ourselves as we are. Now let's talk about a mirror for just a minute. I know that ladies specifically spend a lot of time in the bathroom getting ready. I don't have to do that. I just have a few hairs on my head. I take a shower. I go like this. And I say, I'm ready. I'm done. I, I mean, it takes me less than two minutes to get ready in the morning. And that's when I'm slow. Okay? But some women will spend an hour or two. We used to have a friend in California, Felice. I don't know how many hours she'd spend in the bathroom getting ready to go out. And she just, she just was like that. You know, that was her. And women like to do that. But you know what? We need to see ourselves through the mirror of God's Word and see ourselves as we really are. And when we do that, when we look at Jacob's life and we see all the wrong that happened, we need to say, hey, I need to see the wrong in my life and to see the things in my life that are displeasing to the Lord. Because you know what? You can be saved and on your road to heaven, but filthy in practices of this world. You can be. Lot was an example of that. The Bible called Lot just, and I'm thinking to myself, just? Lot? How could he be just living in Sodom and Gomorrah? And surely he was uh, involved in the sins of that city. I don't know. But the Bible says he was just. I believe Lot is in heaven. And there's a lot of Christians that are saved, but they're not close. And you know what the problem is? They're not looking into the mirror that God has for us. They're not looking there to see how they really are. And we can look today at Jacob and study his life. 25 chapters in the book of Genesis about Jacob and see all the things that we don't have time to preach every little thing about him. But one day what happened was Esau said, I'm going to come and see you, my brother, years later. And Jacob was afraid. And Jacob thought, what am I going to do? And God began to work through circumstances in Jacob's life to get Jacob to look inside. And one night, he got right with God. He did. He prayed, and he, and he finally changed. And he says, I won't let go, Lord, until you bless me. 
And that angel that dealt with him, dealt with him on a spiritual level, and, and Jacob got right with God. And the angel said to Jacob, I believe it was the Lord, Lord Jesus coming down, the Christophany said, your name is not going to be Jacob anymore, but it's going to be Israel. What does that mean, Prince of God? And from that moment on, Jacob was changed. He was totally... He used to trick people before. He used to trick his father and his brother and everybody he could. And now his sons are going to trick him. They're going to say, Joseph was killed. And he's going to believe him. He's going to be taken in to the lie. Because now his life has changed. And you know what? Sometimes we're a little naive when we're close to the Lord. People trick us and people do this and that to us. But our main thing is that we need to be rightly related to the Lord as believers. And we do that by looking at the mirror of His Word through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and through circumstances that come our way. Why do bad things happen? It's because God's trying to get our attention. So what we need to do is say, Lord, I'm hearing, I'm listening, I'm accepting what you're telling me. And Jacob went through a lot. He really did. He went through the cement mixer. Can you imagine going through a cement mixer, you being yourself in the mixer? How terrible that would be? Well, that's what Jacob went through. So today, I just ask you, to think about your life and to think about where you are with the Lord. And if there's sin in your life, that you remember this verse. 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I like what was written in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. You know what's wrong with America today? We need to do that. If every born-again believer in Jesus Christ would live for God in this country, we'd see revival, and this country would turn back to God overnight if it were, happen, if it were to happen. We can't do that outside of these walls. We can't do that to anybody else other than those who are watching here. But we need to be praying for that and working for that and hoping and praying that God will speak to hearts today. How about you? Are you like Jacob before he was really converted to God? Or were you like, are, you, are you like Jacob after his name became Israel and he was humbly following after God? What kind of a Jacob type person are you today? I would hope that I'm on this other side. Because I like Jacob's life after he changed. Oh, he was peaceable. He was a different person and God used him. But how many Christians are living like Jacob of old and trying to figure out an angle, trying to figure out this or that? You can't do that. we got to follow the Lord. And I say his way is best. So Amen. let's follow him. And let us look to our Lord and God and thank him for all his blessings. And let's follow after Jesus Christ. And you know what, folks? This is the key right here. This is the key. Amen. We've got to listen to it, we've got to read it, we've got to memorize it, we've got to believe it, and we've got to live it. And if we will, we will make a difference. Guess what? Jacob made a difference after his life changed. Our lives can be different too. Is your life different today? Heads bowed and eyes are closed. <clears throat> the people listening to my voice come into two categories. And it's not men and women, but it's people who are saved and people who are lost. There's only two kinds of people on this planet. You're either saved, you're going to heaven, you know your sins are forgiven, or you are lost and on the road to hell. There's no other way to say it. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can join every church in town, you can be baptized in every church in town, you can be a member of every major religion on this planet, but unless you know the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, as your personal Savior, you will not go to heaven. I'm sorry if that offends you. It's the Bible and it's the truth. I'm staking my future on it and I hope you are too. And then we have people who are saved but not living for the Lord. Living a wild life, living a life of rebellion. That's what Jacob was. He was rebellious. He was a rebel. And God had to get him and he had to shake him and he had to change him. Oh, today may we change ourselves before God has to bring the hammer down on us to change us. Father, today bless this invitation. And I pray, Father, for those that are not living for, for Thee, those who are saved, that they would turn today, Father, turn today in their hearts and say, Lord, I've sinned, I've failed You, I've done this and I've done that. I'm coming home to You, Father.
Please forgive me. I want to follow in your footsteps. I want to be your true disciple, and I want to live for you. I pray that you have that today. And then, Father, there's others who are listening today outside of our room here who've never known you as Savior, who've never received you. Father, I pray they understand that the Bible says that we're all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible says. And that because of our sins, you said in your word that we have, if we die in our sins, we have to go to a place called hell. Lord, we know that hell is a real place. And we know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, we know that people without you go to a place called hell. The Bible's full of the teaching. I pray you would help people to remember what they've heard. And then, Father, we thank you. That the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Lord Jesus came in this world. He lived a sinless life. He was crucified and he was buried and he rose again so that we might be saved. Father, thank you for the verses that say in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if we should confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, we should be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father, if there's anyone listening to me right now who's not saved, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they would realize they're sinner and realize that they need to ask you to come in their heart to forgive them and to save them and to make them ready for heaven through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray you save the lost who are hearing this message today. And for those Christians that are not close to you today, Lord, would be the day of coming home and having that life-changing event happen spiritually so that they can live for you and be counted for you in a, in a wonderful way. Bless this invitation time, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we pray here, as we wait, I want to ask you, <clears throat> if you need to make a spiritual decision today that you pray to the Lord, and if you're a Christian and you're living away from Him, that you pray to Him and ask Him to forgive you and to make you the Christian you need to be. And that came in Jacob's life, and he had to change. He had to make a decision, and he did. And his life changed completely after that. But how about you today? Are you being rebellious against God? If you are, please come back to Him and, and follow the God who saved you, the God who wants to bless you. And today, if you're here and you're not saved, if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, and if you don't know that if you die, you go to heaven right now, I invite you to open your heart by faith and receive the Lord Jesus Christ and pray and ask Him to come in your heart and save you. And if you'll do that by faith, I promise you, on the authority of God's Word, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. He will save you if you will ask Him to come in your heart. Father God, today, right now, I ask that those who are not saved will pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know that if I die today, I'd have to go to a devil's hell. But Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me, to save my soul, and to make me the person I ought to be for thee. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, and I do accept you as my personal Savior. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, honestly, I'm glad for you. And if you didn't pray that prayer but needed to, and if you're listening to this tape, back this tape up and listen to what I said. And I pray that you will pray to the Lord and ask Him to come into your heart forgive your sins and to save you. Well, we're glad that you've been here today. I've enjoyed talking to you about Jacob. What a character. My goodness. If Hollywood ever figures out the book of Genesis, they're going to have the greatest miniseries that was ever made. So anyway, I'm glad to be teaching it. I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad that you're here by the means of this videotape. Pray you come back next Sunday. We'll continue on. So I just want to say, Lord, I pray you bless these people that have come today and encourage them and give us a great week. Thank you for all your blessings. And Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross so that we might be saved. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. This is Welcome Sunday to you, and we're so glad you're here. Hope you come back next Sunday, 10.30 a.m. Be here, and we'll continue on with our...
studies in the Bible. Next week, the Lord willing, we'll be talking about Joseph and what happened to him in the book of Genesis. God bless you today.